Yes, fish fans, well, myself and Gary Hood have just finished our second episode of Cold Water Carping. And if you're not already doing it, make sure you hit the subscribe button to keep in touch with all of these videos that are coming from us guys at Team Tracker. We're at the Boathouse Fisheries, which is based in Shropshire. It's a lovely little lake of about five, six acres with about 150 fish. There's seven pegs and plenty of different depths to go at. In this episode, me and Gaz both have a fish, but we also learn a couple of tricks from each other. Gaz came up with something that I'd never really got my head round to do with coots so stay tuned and I hope you enjoy the episode. You join us at the wonderful Boathouse Fisheries. Now this is a fishery based near Bridge North which is almost the Welsh border I think. Plenty of sheep about so I'm going to class it as almost Wales. Now this lake is pretty new, it's a pretty new fishery it's, the lake's actually been here a long time, but as a carp fishery, it's pretty new. There's about 100 to 120 fish in here, ranges of depth from about three foot down to nine foot. Um, I have fished it once before, didn't catch anything, which is surprising, but as a bonus, there's no bream because they know the lake was drained last year and they only put carp back in and a few perch, so there is no bream. So sadly, I'm not gonna catch a bream this one. But what me and guys are gonna do, we're gonna have a little wander around the lake, have a look at the pegs, see if we can see any signs of fish, decide where we're going to fish, get some little bags out and see if we can snag one. Yeah, last time we were here, they were showing along that edge. Like bosh, 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 but all in this end, they never, there's anything show over there. So Gaz and I have had a little wander around, I haven't seen anything. So what we've decided is knowing what I know about the lake with the double being really shallow water, we had a look up there earlier, completely, you can see the bottom quite a way out, couldn't see any fish. So figuring the fish were probably down in this slightly deeper water, which is the other end of the lake. We've come into the trees, there's a, a swim called Steps and one called Coots, and we're gonna drop in those two swims. We've both got some good depth of water in front of us. I've got a feeling hopefully the fish will be down this end. I'm just going to cash some bags out and see if we can snaffle one. But for now, we need to get back to the cart, get the kit out, get the bivvies up, get the rods out, and see if we can catch fish. Yes, fish fan, so I'm in my swim now, and what I've done, um, I've got my two rods on the left. I found it slightly clear and slightly deeper. So one's at about 10 wraps, one's at 12 wraps. Same sort of area, and what I've done with them, just little maggot rigs. I've got little mesh bags on, and I've cast them out. Now, on this fishery, all plastic is banned, so I can't use my Medusa rigs. What I've done, I've used a spinner, and then I've tied them on with a little bit of floss. After a bit of casting around, there's quite a lot of weed on the bottom, and the weed that's on the bottom is this. Now, I can't remember what it's called, but it's super brittle. So when you pull it, it breaks really, really easy. So you don't ever worry about like fish getting snagged up in it. But to present, I thought what I'd use is a quite an old tactic, which is the good old chod rig. So I've tied myself a chod rig. Again, I've just put a few maggots on top of it. They give it a little bit of movement. And I think at this time of year, fish needs that little bit of movement, might attract it down to have a little nose and hopefully you'll snag it. Now, I know Gaz has had a cast around on his swim, very similar he's found quite a lot of this weed as well so i think he's going to tie up a few trods as well cast them around and we're just going to rove around and try and get a bite but before he does that he's going to pop to the shop and get some logs because behind this room we found a lovely little log burner with the temperature being the way it is it's going to drop to the minus one minus two tonight we're going to get that log burner going so we can be nice and cozy later for a bit of a burger but for now last rod going out and hopefully we'll have a fish to show you at some point <laughs> Thank you. 
One thing's for sure this time of the year, you blink and the daylight's gone. So it's dead important to be dead organized. You know, me and Gaz turned up this morning. Obviously it takes us a bit longer with the filming and stuff, but we've managed to find our swims. We've both got rods out. I've got two on the deck, which are on nice clear spots. And I've got one on a choddy into where it is this light weed. Gaz has gone three chods, exactly the same. We found a log burner, got some logs, got a nice log burner going. Got a couple of nice burgers here, ready to go in the old pan. So me and Gaz are gonna chill here, enjoy the fire, and hopefully we'll catch a fish. Well, as is uh, the norm at this time of year, that was a long night of darkness. And unfortunately, it was a very quiet night as well. However, myself and Gaz got up this morning and we've seen some fish in front of the big double. Now the big double is a lot shallower, which shocks me a little bit at this time of year to imagine that the fish would have moved into the shallows. However, chatting with the bailiff, the bailiff did inform me that the fish do push away from any sort of pressure. Now, obviously me and Gaz are down this side. I've been fishing down into the deeper water. Gaz isn't fishing far out of that water either. And obviously the fish have pushed a little bit back. So what I've done is the spot that I'd got at like 10, it's 10 wraps and 12 wraps. I've just put a little bit of bait there. So I've put about seven spoms, mixed maggot and boily crumb. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk around to the big double, take the rods with us. We're gonna sit there and have a few hours over there and see if we can either catch those fish there or maybe even push them back down here. Hopefully they'll find the bait and maybe we'll get one later on this evening. But for now, I need to get this packed away, get the rods on the barrow and wander around. just round in the double now after Gaz and I had seen those fish this morning we just thought it was a good idea to move around here the fish were obviously over had moved away from the pressure of me and Gaz fishing there last night um within 10 minutes casting out I've had a take move away Gaz that's been out there about two minutes oh what? yeah unfortunately like a number I've uh, managed to lose it um, but I'm pretty confident that we're going to have another bite. Just a little look at what we're fishing over and stuff. Over here, we've had a little cast and bringing in a lot of this, which is, I believe it's called crow's foot, which is um, a very brittle weed. So you don't really worry about fish getting snagged in it because as you can see, you just grab it and pull it and it breaks very easy, unlike Canadian or something like that. So with this weed being died down now, it'll be low level. So you're talking probably six inches, maybe a foot if you were very unlucky. And this is where something like a chod you know, it's an old school method. Chod seems to come in and out of fashion and they seem to be massively out of fashion now and you don't see a lot of people fishing them. But yeah, for me, casting over that, a chod's just gonna be flawless. But it also shows at this time of year, you know, we've looked, saw fish and making the effort to make that little move has resulted in a bite. We haven't landed it, but we've had a bite which raises your confidence. I know the fish are gonna be here, so I'm pretty confident of another bite. If we'd have packed down all our kit and move around here, we'd have lost another two hours of daylight. Then you'd be running a lot, lot longer. Now, tonight it's gonna to drop really cold. We've got minus one, minus two tonight. And I don't think these fish will stay in the shallow water. I think hopefully they'll move down to the deeper water, which is where me and Gaz have fished last night. I did put a little bit of bait out before I left. So I'm kind of hoping we can, we can snag one out of here. And if we do, then we can head back tonight, maybe pick one up down there. And if we don't, then again tomorrow, if we see fish, we can have a pack down, have a wander around and maybe cast them out again. But for now, I'm gonna enjoy a brew and I'm gonna sit here and hopefully wait for the Dalkins to tank off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. 
So here we go, look. I thought there might be another bite in this swim fish fans, and surely enough, there has been. A beautiful, pristine little mirror, just shy of 16 pound at 15, 14, and I am a happy, happy camper. Just shows I still can't believe there's no one out fishing at this time of year, because the fish are still there to be had. It is a little bit of hard work, you know, the moose definitely paid off as people say because you know we saw the fish and we've moved over here cast rigs at them we've had two bites now landed one of them and yeah i'm a happy 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 camper hopefully there's another bite here before we have to head back for the evening but if not and if they're still over here tomorrow then potentially we're going to pack up come back and see if we can catch another one of these beautiful little boathouse fisheries carp yes baby <laughs> So we're giving it a little bit longer after that fish, hoping to have another one, but we haven't seen any fish show, no liners, no nothing, it's nearly three o'clock. So we're gonna get the rods in, get back round to the swim and try and get them back on the baiting spot before it gets dark. So Gaz and I got back to our original swims and managed to get all the rods out before the hours of darkness. I put two rods onto the baited area that I'd done earlier on in the day and then the third rod I tied a fresh chod up, fresh bait and fresh maggots and that was going to be dispatched out into the lake in a similar sort of line of where I'd caught the fish earlier on in the day. It did feel when casting the rod and filling it down that the water was slightly deeper than where we'd caught that day but I felt that the fish might move over there in the evening. Once the bobbins were set, it was time to sit back, relax with the fire and wait for the evening bites. Sadly, the daylight came and we were both biteless. So after watching the water and having a quick brew, the decision was made that we were gonna pack down, move around the lake and try and do what we'd done the day before. Well then fish fans, you find us in the third swim of the session. Now, this morning we've woken up and there was a big frost all over the cars, all over the floor. However, where me and Gaz were in the trees, it was actually a little bit milder, which was really nice for packing down. Everything was nice and dry. So what we've decided to do after a little walk, seen a little bit of fizzing in front of this swim. We haven't seen the fish show today like they did yesterday. I think the real cold snap last night probably has just quietened them down a little bit more, but we saw something here. Oh, and we're away. Oh, yeah. Well, I really didn't expect this to tank off. I'm fishing just a couple of yards down, uh, down the bank from Bonesy. Not really in a swim, I suppose. It's just a bit of a gap in the hedges. And I've put three choddies out where we saw that activity yesterday. And as you can see, we're away. the cold water cart. Oh. Lovely jumpy, that's a banger that is bones. Come 
on, baby. There we go. How about that? My first carp of 2022. And it's an absolute peach. Kind of took my lead location-wise from the coots this today. As um, they were diving, so if there's something they're diving for, something they find interesting, it's probably interesting to these as well. So that was the uh, location sorted. Rigs-wise, it was a little chuddy, a little light lead, pink pop-up, topped with a couple of maggots, just wanged out into the area where the coots are. Not half an hour later, it rattled off with this bad boy. So, happy days. How about that for a bit of excitement? A take mid-filming and Gaz has managed to land an absolute little scaly banger from this wicked lake, which is the Boathouse Fisheries in Shropshire. Gaz has, has said something to me that I'd never really thought of too much, which is how he's caught that fish. So we're both fishing exactly the same methods. We've got chod rigs out and it's a rig that pretty much has gone out of fashion in carp fishing. You don't see it a huge amount. It's an awesome rig and it presents itself really well over a multitude of, of bottoms. But what Gaz was saying was this morning we haven't seen fish. So we stood on our, on our swim fronts this morning having a coffee like you do, watching the water, looking for any sort of signs and we didn't really see anything. As I wandered off to the toilet, I saw a small amount of fizz in in front of this swim. So I thought, well, potentially that's the only thing I've got to go on. So let's drop in there. However, Gaz had a slightly different thought. When you can't see any signs of fish. Gaz keeps an eye on the coots. Now his thinking is, the coots are diving, so they're finding something down there interesting, some form of food. So there's a good chance that the carp might be fine down there as well, having a little munch on the same thing as the coots. So what Gaz has done, it, because we haven't seen anything, he's used that knowledge to then put his chod rig right in the middle of them coots, and sure enough, an hour later, it's tanked off. So there it is, the beautiful little chod rig, and it's accounted for both of our fish. Anyway, we've got a few hours left of the session now till we've got to pack up and head home. You can see the sun shining, it's actually warmed up enough for me to take my jacket off, which is an absolute bonus. There we go, no more fish, but we've had a fantastic time here at the Boathouse Fisheries. It's so lovely being out at this time of year. A little bit of a social with Gaz. We've both caught fish and we've both had a great time. But until next time, guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button, keeping in touch with all the glorious, glorious videos coming from us guys at Team Tracker. <laughs>